Hi, Susan. How are you? Hi, Seal. Welcome to Workroom Tech. I'm so happy to be seeing Workroom Tech, even if I can't <laughs> actually be there in person. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a mess. I should uh, But that's how we're <laughs> supposed to look. <laughs> that's true. Whenever I visit someone and um, I go in their workrooms, the first thing they say is, oh, my workroom is messy. And I'm like, oh, I love it. That's how I, I feel like messy home. workroom. I feel yeah. right at home. Exactly. <laughs> so clean up. <laughs> so why are we at Workroom Tech for the podcast today? Oh, so today we have a visual podcast. We're going to talk about hand sewing. Okay. And uh, Kevin Kais asked if I could do a hand sewing demo. So we're going to do that today. And it's not something that I could write out in a blog or something that people could listen to. Wouldn't that be a silly podcast if I was talking about hand sewing on the podcast without a video? Well, I think if with any other group, but our colleagues, it might be, but I think <laughs> for anybody who started to listen to this while they're working, they're going to say, oh, I need to see this. Yes, you will need to see this. You'll need to go to YouTube, but you might still learn something just from listening. So don't shut the podcast off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, podcast is still working. good. <laughs> and then so go we're going to hand sew. We're going to hand sew today and I'll just uh, do some hems and, um, how to hand sew a side hand with black outlining and um, right. put on trim and a ladder stitch in it. I have a list and we'll just get to what we can get to today. And if I have more, then we'll do it for another podcast. Perfect. All right. So let me change the uh, camera. So look away, folks. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to make you dizzy here. <laughs> and there we go. Perfect. I can see it really well. All right. Great. So we're going to start with a bottom hem. This is a doubled four inch hem. This is a cotton fabric. It looks like linen, but it's a cotton fabric. And I have pinned with the prim long glass head pens. Love these pens. And I'm pinning at an angle and burying the point. And that's so I won't get stuck on the front or back. Okay. And um, as you handle the fabric, having them at a diagonal is safer than putting them straight up because when you grasp the fabric I've had that point go through onto the other side and then that'll get, get you and yeah. then we get blood on our fabric yes and it always happens on white fabric <laughs> <laughs> so they're about a hand width apart on the spacing on the pins okay I'm going to use Coates dual duty hand quilting thread I've used this uh, brand of thread my whole career over 30 years, and I've never had any uh, dry rot from the sun or any hand stitching come out. I've had um, side hems, the fabric in the side hems rot, and the only thing holding up the, the side hems was the thread. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using um, John James Long Darners. Oh, I love Number that. seven. Yeah, these are the best hand sewing needles. They are over two inches long and uh, just a lovely needle. And they do bend over time. So you might see, um, lay them down here so you can see, you might get your needle sort of bent. And that's okay, because you know what? It's custom curved for my hand. Yes. Um, it might not be the right for your hand, but when you need a curved needle, there you go. And I'm right. not very good working with those true curved needles. Um, yeah, not, they always feel a little awkward to me. Yeah, they're a little awkward. So that's a really good needle to keep on hand. I only throw them away when they break. Gotcha. And I'm going to use a dark color thread so you can see the stitches. So I've pulled off um, a single thread, knotted it in one end, and I had one ready to go to save time. And I'm gonna show two different ways to hand sew, the um, easy way, that's not as neat on the back. Okay. And then the one that takes a little more time, but it looks very clean and neat on the back and it would be uh, appropriate for something that's unlined. So the first stitch is uh, best described as a, uh, blanket stitch. Okay. And uh, you can start on the left or the right. It doesn't matter. Um, so uh, whatever's comfortable for you. And if you're working with somebody, if you have a employee and um, one of you can start on one end and one can start on the other and you can meet in the middle. Okay. So um, I'm going to start on the left. And this stitch looks more like a stitch from your blind hammer because the needle is going perpendicular to the hem. So I'm going up and down okay. instead of sideways. 
So I'm going to start by taking a little bit of the fabric and going into the fold mm -hmm. and holding that down with my thumb and taking the next stitch. And you can see how fast this can go. Yeah. So I'm doing it at slow-mo because I'm demonstrating. <laughs> so whenever I'm, I'm teaching, I'm always sewing slow. I will say that does look nice and neat. Yeah. But you do see it on the back. Right. And you're just and then, catching a little bit of the front. Yeah, a little bit of, of the front okay. and trying to be a little more generous with the back. Now, if I was using a matching thread, of course, that would right. look better. So I'm going to tilt that just so, so it's more comfortable for me because um, I'm standing here behind the tripod. <laughs> the camera between you and the fabric. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and you getting hung up in the pens is always part of it, right? Right. So that doesn't change whether you're straight up and down or on a diagonal. No, 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 no. That's always the case. So you want to make sure you keep the tension even. The, the last stitch when you're doing this style mm -hmm. is always going to pull away. And that's why you have to keep that tension even by gotcha. holding that down with your thumb before you take your next stitch. Also keeps it where you need it out of the way. Yes, right. It makes that loop. So you're, mm -hmm. you're making a loop that you're sewing through. It's funny, I always think of the blanket stitch as being a decorative stitch. It never occurred to me to use it uh, the way you are. Yeah, I, I like, I actually like sewing the stitch. It's. I don't know. It goes so fast. It's so easy. You don't have to think. It's like, and it's very satisfying. To, yeah. Yeah. You put on a podcast or some music <laughs> and listen and, uh, and you're ready to go. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and knot this off. So I'm going to pick up that last stitch and not come through to the front. Keeping my thumb there to keep the tension on. Mm -hmm. Take the needle through the loop. And it nodded before I was ready for it too. Oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> well, you know what? It's not the end of the world. If something starts to nod up on you, um, stop and try to tease it out. And if you can't, well, then that means it's nice and secure. So I actually can come around and, and re-knot it go okay. back. Now, it's funny. I was going to ask you if this thread knotted up easily. Um, um, not too bad. That was okay. more me. Okay. But again, it didn't matter because there you No, are. it doesn't matter. Um, so there's the blanket stitch. And there's another version. Um, I wouldn't really call it a blanket stitch, but this is how some people hem. I don't. And uh, that doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just not the way, uh, way I hem. But instead of having that um, stitch running across the top of the hem, uh, some folks in the workroom will just uh, see if I can do it. They will just let the thread go oh, gotcha. up like that. And I'm sure that's just a secure. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I've never done a test to right. see which one is more secure than the other. I've hemmed some pants that way. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like hemming pants and I want it to be done as fast as possible. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a stitch that's really, really fast. Yeah. And from the front, you have vertical stitches. Right, you and, have exactly and, the same look. And on some fabric, a vertical stitch looks better than a horizontal stitch. Right. Some fabric, a horizontal stitch will look better. All right, so, so there's two things. There's more than one right way to do everything. And if someone were to ask you, which of those stitches should I use? The answer would start with, it depends. <laughs> it depends. Right. And um, this would be, uh, this stitch on the right would be something that's much easier to learn if you're just getting started. Right. Um, the one on the left, when I'm teaching this, getting people to learn how to, to hold your thumb there to keep that tension 
um, is a little harder to learn. Right. But it's easy. Once you get the rhythm down, yeah, it's really, really easy to I do. I think the first couple stitches could be awkward, but like you said, once you get it. But here's my question, Susan. Of those two stitches, I feel like the blanket stitch on the left is a little more secure. If yeah. you have like a kitty cat get behind it, <laughs> something like that, I think that one might survive better. <laughs> Nothing can survive a kitty cat. Well, this is very true. <laughs> Well, I have a new grand kitty, so uh, I'm, oh, how I'm, nice, nice. I'm, I'm learning. Ab I know about cats because I have two older grand cats, but now I have a grand kitty. <laughs> so now I'm going to do um, the stitch that I use most often, and uh, it's, it's sort of invisible on the back, but it's also very, very secure. And I'm starting with the knot behind the hem. Mm -hmm. And then taking a small stitch to the front and letting the needle travel in the top of the hem about uh, three eighths of an inch. Okay. To a half inch. So a small stitch to the front, a long running stitch inside the top of the hem. Okay. This is the so, stitch I was just doing in my workroom before we started okay. the podcast. So I guess it would be called a running stitch. Okay. One of my uh, most embarrassing moments uh, <laughs> was when I very first time I taught at a seminar um, at a conference for Cheryl Strickland. There was a hundred people in the class and the class was on details, you know, hand sewing, hand pleated ruffles, all that stuff. And um, someone who I admire very much, Amy Burton was in the class and she raised her hand and said, what kind of stitch is that? And it was, I was demonstrating hand sewing. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, I don't know, in and out, in and out. <laughs> <laughs> I was so embarrassed because I didn't know, I wasn't professional enough as the speaker to know what the name of the stitch was that I was using. So anyway, so, so this, this is, a, we're gonna call it a running stitch. <laughs> so, so what's changed? Do you know the name of everything that you teach now, or do you just feel less embarrassed that you don't know? The name I feel it? less embarrassed. I say, let's find out together. Okay. Right? <laughs> the so it, when people know say, um, when I'm teaching and someone says, oh, I have a dumb question. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Because <laughs> we like dumb questions. I might have an answer. If you have a really smart question and you might stump the teacher. <laughs> So I'm just going along here and uh, just keeping that thread inside the hem. And I think that is more durable because there's no loose stitches showing. Right. Um, Susan, and I'll show you from the front. The difference between how you are doing it and how I do it is I think I take the stitch through the front fabric and then like, I, I think I'm doing more motions than I need to. Oh, that looks mm. Fine. Like even even in that darker thread, it's hard to see. Yeah. So on that fabric, actually, a horizontal stitch looks better than I a agree. vertical stitch. I agree. Although if this was a, a the right color, it would be yeah, you fine. Would. I think I put a little more work into it, which is not uncommon for me to make things. <laughs> Um, I'm going to, when I go back into my workroom this afternoon, I'm going to try doing that part of it in one motion instead of two and see. If and it does. Um, part of this is, and this is hard to teach, is holding the fabric with your thumb and I'm using my middle finger. Mm -hmm. So I'm grasping the fabric between my fingers right here. Okay. And, and that is giving a little area of uh, tension where I'm sort of rocking that needle back up okay, and, and holding everything together. So that's hard to teach. It's something that you have to keep practicing. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go ahead and just put a knot in um, and that's taking one small stitch to the front, coming out, put the needle through the loop and then I'll just catch a thread and uh, come through again. And that's knotted and we'll leave a tail so that it doesn't come unknotted by stabbing down into the hem and trimming off. So there's the little knot there. Perfect. Yeah. 
I can't tell you how many miles of hymns I put in like that. <laughs> My idea of heaven is finding out those things. When I get to the pearly gates, I'm going to have a little chart. And by the way, you sewed 55,000 miles worth of. Oh my goodness. That's true. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How many um, Roman shade rings have you sewn on? Oh my goodness. It's just, just crazy. How many times so have gonna... you pricked my finger? Oh, well, we don't want to talk about that. Hopefully it won't happen on, on camera. And another thing people want to see is how I put in a knot at the bottom. And it's fascinating. Everybody does this different. Lori Medford yes. does it different than I do. And I uh, just spin it around my finger and roll it down. And mm -hmm. there's a knot. And uh, so now let's do a side hem. So here's a little uh, sample I made up of a uh, nap sateen and face fabric, like a drapery side hem. Mm -hmm. And the same um, pens at an angle, about a hand width apart. Okay. And for a side hem and a drapery, I like to have the side hem connected to the face fabric so that there's never a chance that it'll roll out uh, okay. um, away from um, the face fabric. Okay. You don't want to put a stitch every stitch because then it would look like a blind hem machine. Right. Um, and it wouldn't look pretty unless you had trim, you know, if we had trim going over it, it wouldn't matter. But so I'm doing uh, the same similar running stitch. And then when I get to a pen, that's my cue to take a small bite to the front. So I'm going through to the front. I can feel that with my finger underneath and I'm rocking right back up and into the side hem and that should leave a small stitch on the back. You don't want to pull that tight because you don't want to dimple. So just, uh, right. you know, just let it float there on the front and then keep sewing until you get to the next pin. And to keep the th thread, the stitches, so they don't show, I'm putting the needle behind the side hem. So I'm not sewing out here the needle is going down below the edge of the side hem and then I'm rocking up. So the motion is more like um, a backward seven. So I'm going down and up, okay. down and up. All right, that makes sense. So the thread is getting pulled sort of behind the edge of the side hem and I'll, I'll pull that out and show you. So you don't see any stitches here. If you turn it, that I looks can so nice. pull it away. Yeah. You can sort of see it, but I'm actually stitching behind the side hem and right. not um, right on the edge of it. So I'm just tucking the point of the needle below, not coming through to the front. And uh, this goes pretty fast. So it's a hand sewn side hem on an average drapery should take about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, that's about where I am. I've timed myself on that. And I don't, um, I don't try to go fast. I was having this discussion with um, my friend Nancy Latz recently that, you know what, going slow is okay. It is. There's you don't actually, have to rush, rush, rush all the time. Yeah, there's actually a, a, a slow sewing um, movement, like the slow yes, movement. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and I have found that if I try to do, do this really fast, I tend to make mistakes. Um, I tend to not, I do enjoy this part of the process. And if I really rush through it, it's that much less time I'm enjoying. Right. And I do a better job if I just take my time. Right. So, you know, it's all, it all works out. You charge what you're worth mm -hmm. and things take time and uh, that's how it goes. Um, I know that that doesn't help people that are right now overwhelmed with work and <laughs> for right. me to say just slow down <laughs> right and, and, and it's I think it's thoughtful of you to address that but at the same time if you're rushing there's a really good chance you're making mistakes yeah so I'm going to make a knot here so I, I caught a little bit of the um, fabric and made a loop and then come through catch those threads and then right into that knot I'm going to stab and pull it in so that it disappears and of course you use a matching thread right there's a side hem and then there's these little floating stitches on the front 
about every five or six inches apart, whatever your hand width is. Right. And now let's do a side hem and black out because we don't want what? Pinholes of light. Pinholes of light. <laughs> I joke that's going to be on my tombstone. <laughs> no pinholes of light. <laughs> All right, so let me pull this up. And um, you could put pins in this. Some people use uh, clamps, like quilters mm -hmm. clamps, clothes pins, whatever to hold everything yeah. in place. Um, and I have already prepared this with inner lining. Okay. And I want the inner lining to come into the side hem. I have about uh, three quarters of an inch um, okay. to, yeah, about three quarters of an inch into okay. the side hem. And then the blackout lining is gonna go for a single fold into the side hem. Okay. Okay. And I do that because if I cut the blackout lining, even with the finished width, I'll either cut it crooked <laughs> and you'll see that when light shines through yes. or it will creep back or recess a little bit and mm -hmm. you'll see that when light shines right. through so by making sure the blackout falls into the side hem you don't have that problem I think that looks so nice and neat and um so let's get some thread I'll use some uh, blue thread And I pulled off a really long piece because I'm going to baste the blackout lining to the side hem. Um, oh, again, I don't want the side hem to, I don't want the lining and then I to roll out because right. I'm not touching the face fabric. I can't do those little stitches to the front like I did the last time or right. pinholes of light. Susan, let me ask you a question. You said you were getting a longer thread. I meant to ask you this earlier. How long do you normally cut your thread? So About that a yard. Doesn't... Okay. Yeah, that's the um, the biggest mistake people make uh, in classes uh, and when they're learning to hand sew is they'll pull off a length of thread that's longer than they are tall. Ah, that's a good one. So it happens every time. Okay. And then you're pulling the thread in and it's getting tangled and your, right. your motion of hand sewing um, is multiplied. It, okay. It's too much work. It's easier just to put in a knot. I understand why people do it because they don't want to stop. Right. But, but for this case, because I'm basting, I have a nice long piece and I'm pulling back. Mm -hmm. Let me move the camera a little bit. Opening this up and this fold is the leading edge. Okay. So there's the leading edge. I'm going to baste in that crease line. And uh, starting on the left, Try not to get out of the camera view there. I'm taking a <laughs> stitch all the way through. Yes, it's making a hole, but it's not going to be anywhere that matters. Okay. And then about, again, your, mat, your hand width apart, which I use a lot. I'm taking a stitch through to the front. And I then again. I this, Susan, and this is brilliant. So this will keep um, that blackout lining in place. Yes. Right so, at the um, crease. Right. And on the other panel um, sample I did, I had those stitches coming through on the front. Well, this right. time the stitches are coming through right in this edge. Okay. And you're right. So that I, wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. That wouldn't leave pinholes of light. It's hard to see, <laughs> even with the blue thread. But um, so you're running along in that crease. So yeah, so the pinholes of light aren't going to happen because the stitches are on the edge here, not okay. where light is shining through. And you just do that all the way down and then fold your side hem over and you would use a fusible product on the side hem. Oh. But that keeps your lining, your inner lining and um, together and your side hem so it doesn't pull away. So it doesn't pull away, right. And if this were a dark color fabric, you probably could get away um, with hand sewing the side hem as long as you didn't take a stitch to the front. Okay. Because there is inner lining, but on something like a white fabric, it would show. Right. So you'd you would still need to do the basting then, even if you were? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you can do this with lining and inner lining too. You okay. don't have to just do it with blackout, but this is a, a great way to hold all your layers together inside your hem mm -hmm. 
And so next, I have a drapery panel. So this is um, a drapery from a class we just finished for how to put banding on draperies. Oh, nice. And I want to do a ladder stitch. So I unstitched one corner so I could <laughs> redo it, re-sew it. So I'm down at this bottom and this is the perfect spot for a ladder stitch. So I've hand sewn down to the bottom. Okay. And then I'm coming around this corner and I'm using a doubled thread now. Okay. And tuck in any little uh, pieces of fabric that I'm trying to poke out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take a stitch on the opposite side and then come down straight like rungs on a ladder and make another stitch and then go the opposite side. So I'm not catching in between all that fabric that's in between on that double side hem. I don't want to catch that. I think the thing about the ladder stitch to me is it, it feels so simple, but it's again, so satisfying when you get done and you pull it tight. Yeah, and this is one of those um, added details, hand sewing the bottom corners closed instead of machine sewing or instead mm -hmm. of just leaving them open, that is uh, a sign of a custom product. Okay, so you so, actually, yeah, go ahead. There are all the stitches. So I'll pull that close. This is so, it's so, so satisfying. Love yes. that. <laughs> Look how beautiful that looks. Isn't that great? And then I can make a little knot here and bury the knot, bury the tail. So that's two more things I learned from you. The first time I saw the burying the knot was um, when I took your craftsy class on uh, making draperies. And um, I learned the ladder stitching from you at the workroom weekend that you had. Um, oh, nice. Five years ago. Oh yeah. I just had a memory come up on uh, social media. Yeah, I did too. About the workroom weekend. Yes. Um, I'd love to do another one of those. That was a lot of fun. And I did learn a lot in that one, but the, the hand stitching, I felt like that was one of those things. Oh, well, this will be nice. And I learned so much. But, <laughs> yeah, that was but, actually uh, Penny Bruce had it class. And it was a seven, um, seven something stitches. I forgot yes. the title of the class. Like, yeah. Uh, um, but scintillating stitches or something, something like that. I, I can't remember. One, you just actually um, made me feel better about something. Sometimes when I'm doing things like sewing the very bottom clothes, like you just did, I think, is this really worth me taking the time to do it? And I know that what I do is custom and I charge for it. But sometimes I think, does anybody notice? <laughs> does anybody care that I'm doing this? But I can't not do it. That's right. That's right. That's just sometimes it's the things people don't notice that yes. make it really, really nice. So yeah, keep doing that. Okay. I will. So I feel, now, I feel now we're validated. Gonna pack, um, we're going to do a French pleat. Okay. So I'm just going to, I have the sewing already done, the machine stitching. This does mm -hmm. have buckram. It's a low bulk um, drapery heading. And uh, the pleat is brought up. I'm doing a triple pleat, which is also called a three finger pleat. And I've creased that. And then I'm going to settle that down so it's equal, equal parts, mm -hmm. and bring up the sides. And I like them to be even or the middle a little greater than. So even or greater than the edges. So that looks pretty even, which is good. Mm -hmm. I have um, the same heavy duty thread and also the, the Turco satin thread is great for tacking pleats. Yeah, I use that a lot for pleats. And this is being tacked below the buckram. Okay. So I started on the inside. So my knot is inside and bring it around. And some people tack their pleats side to side instead of on the front of the pleat. Mm -hmm. I'll try to keep this from getting tangled. I'm at a weird, I'm at an awkward angle here trying to. Yeah, do I this. think you're doing remarkably. <laughs> if anybody walked in and saw me right now, they would say, <laughs> what Why is she she's standing there like a crab? <laughs> <laughs> we need a behind the scenes photo of this. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> And uh, one of the mistakes I think people made is pulling this really, really, really tight. You okay. want it tight, you want it taut but the, 
it doesn't have to be uh, strangling it, you know, within an inch of its life. It just right. needs to be um, taught. And uh, I went two times. I'll just do one more time. Two was enough, but I'll do one more. And then I'm going to catch some of the thread and again, do a knot and bury the point to hide the tail. Okay. So there's the knot and I stitch next to the knot into the fabric. Oops, I got hung up there. This is what takes for so long. Right, it is the thread the catching on the point. <laughs> <laughs> Pull that, seat the knot down inside the fibers and, and trim that off. So that's a triple pinch pleat tacked at the bottom. Okay. And it looks really, really pretty. And that would be perfectly fine if it's under a top treatment. And uh, if you want to make a goblet pleat, you would just flare that open and, and stuff that inside. Mm -hmm. um, but for uh, pleats that you want to be more straight, a French pleat, if you don't want it to flare open like that, you can tack the top. It also helps with stack back. Uh, right. If your pleats are tacked at the top so they, they don't flare out as much, it'll mm -hmm. stack back neater. So to do that, we'll start inside again. So the knot is on the inside. And I'm just catching that fold and the next fold and bringing that in. That's another thing that's really satisfying to me. I like <laughs> doing that. <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch other people sew because we do it so much and yes. we're looking at our own hands and uh, it's kind of fun to watch somebody else sewing sometimes. And again, it's so nice and clean. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. I, I like a good traditional French pleat. I think there's uh, nothing wrong with that. Everybody wants something new and different and good old French pleats. Yes. I mean, and these are French. They're not pinched. Right. We're calling that a French pleat. Oh, that looks so <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, that's really, I, I like that. Isn't that nice? Yes. Okay, so now let's add some trim to this drapery. I bet we're running out of time. We, we are, but I think people will probably be okay if we go a few minutes. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> so I have Ooh. this uh, tassel trim and uh, there's, you know, it could go down the middle of the banding. Mm -hmm. It could be sewn to leave a little lip of the banding showing, but I'm going to put it on top of the edge of the banding. Okay. That's what the designers I work with do most often. Okay. Um, is have the trim between the banding. And I have a needle and thread ready to go with, um, I am using the Turco satin this time. And that's also a Coates thread. And you can get that from the workroom marketplace. So I'm gonna start with a tassel at the top. And that means on the opposite drapery, it would start with a tassel on the top, tucking under the ends. And this is a question I get a lot is, do you bring the trim over the back right. or not? And on a drapery, especially a drapery that is going to overlap, I don't because I want, um, the, you know, it's going to go underneath. Okay. And you want to have as much clearance as you can. Got also, um, unless this was a cafe curtain or something where you would see the top, nobody's going to see. Yeah. Good nobody's going to see this, right? Very good point. <laughs> So I usually start it right at the top and it's a little less bulky. Now down on the other end, um, if this was going across the bottom and uh, gonna be at the side hem on the opposite side, I would turn it under okay. there. It's always good to have a little extra somewhere, just in yes. case. <laughs> just in case. So I'm just, um, uh, uh, again, I'm at a loss for words of what kind of stitch this is. So this is going to be also like a running stitch. You need to look at your trim to determine um, what stitch would be best. Mm -hmm. Most of the trims that we use are going to have uh, some kind of gimp braid or uh, woven tape or something that um, you can see the horizontal stitching on that. Yes. So my horizontal stitching is just going to blend in with that. Right. Once in a while, I'll get a trim where um, a vertical stitch would make more sense. Right. And uh, I didn't pin this on, you could certainly pin it on, but I'm just following the edge of the um, banding. Honestly, Susan, in this case, I think pinning it would take more time and be a little bit more 
Well, the pins get caught up in the tassel. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and you already have those cute little dangly beads to deal with and the pleat. And the pleat. <laughs> so why add more things to get in the way when you can just adjust as you sew with that and make sure it's right. Right the edge. And it's really um, sweet trim. And I'm also doing, uh, like I said before, I'm, I'm using my uh, forefinger and middle finger and my thumb mm -hmm. to create uh, tension there to hold the fabric as I'm going along okay. and you have to sew both sides. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so uh, sometimes I'll sew all the way to the end, whether it's going just to the um, bottom of the leading edge or all the way across to the opposite side, across the bottom mm -hmm. and then sew the other side. Okay. And other times I'll sew till this thread runs out and then I'll start here and sew till that thread runs out. Okay. And then you have this little game where your <laughs> needle and thread is racing each other. And, and which side is gonna get finished first. <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, there's nothing neat and uh, special about what I'm doing. I'm just going um, into the thickness of the layers. Right. I'm not going through to the lining. Uh, I can feel that with my hand underneath. Right. And uh, the stitches are really, really generous. It's a small stitch on top and a long running stitch underneath. Okay. And then I would start and do the same on the opposite side. Okay. Hand sewn trim floats. Um, it uh, doesn't pull up and create a drawn edge right. to make a smiling panel that we've talked right. about before. M many and, episodes uh, ago. It's less, <laughs> less tension, right? Right, right, right. It's the, the thread is um, weaving into the fabric. Okay. So uh, unless you pull it really, really tight, it's going to be um, nice and flat and you can mm -hmm. take it off without harming the fabric or the trim. Right. Hopefully you don't have to, but it is nice to have that option. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I have taken a trim off draperies that I've made, you know, after 15 years and um, put new trim on. Mm -hmm. uh, the high end window treatments are a huge investment of money. Right. And uh, sometimes customers want to update them. Right. And uh, we can do that. Trim is a great way to do that. All right, let's do one more. And that will be sewing on a ring. And then our time's up. I had to grab my rings. I didn't have them here. So we'll just use a nickel ring. And uh, when I'm sewing on rings, I usually have a ladder tape or a cord shroud, mm -hmm. um, unless it's a safety shade rings with ring locks. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna sew a ring on and uh, okay. I'm not gonna worry about it being compliant. We're not gonna put okay. any cord in it. It's only one ring. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I sew my rings on with the shade flat on the work table. Right. I go through until I you can hear that pop through, off yeah. of the canvas, right? I don't yes. want to sew the shade to the work table. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> so that's um, stitched on there. And then catching the fabric and not worrying about going through to the front. Okay. And I've got a loop there, take the needle through the loop. And then come around and knot it again. And you want shade rings to have generous, healthy, supportive knots that will last the test of time. Stay in place. And then leave uh, some whiskers. You always wanna leave some whiskers on there. Yes. So um, I know a lot of people that do um, sew shade rings on by a long piece of thread and then they cut the- um, That's how I do it, yeah. Yeah, I, it takes me longer to do that, so. Susan, I'm watching you and I'm thinking I need to reevaluate my shade ring style. I'm not sure that it is saving me any time. I'm gonna have to time myself and see well, what- Well, I get really fiddly when I start tying those um, those knots. I'm I'm faster at sewing a knot than right tying a knot, and that's just from thirty years of of sewing, probably. Right. And um, I, it may be that I'm faster doing that long running thread. I just I'm watching you, and I'm thinking, hmm, that's probably something I need to evaluate. 
Well, it takes me and my timing of um, sewing on rings generally about 30 seconds to sew on a ring. Okay. So, um, and that, you know, you have to stop and thread your needle and mm -hmm. stop and pick up a ring. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so that adds to it, but um, so, you know, you do have to time yourself and that way you have a good idea when you're quoting of how long is it gonna take? Or if you have uh, another hour in the day, before you have to go to an appointment, you know, how many rings can I get? So right, on? right. What can I get accomplished before I go? Yeah. So I think that's about it for um, hand sewing. And they I hope this great. has been helpful. I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay, good. So. <laughs> oh, hang on. There you are. <laughs> uh, talking with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> that was honestly, I feel like you've spoken about the fact that we can have all kinds of technology and you and I both use it, but it really comes down to what we do with our hands. And I, you're right. It is really fascinating to watch someone else do something that I do. And again, I learned a couple of things. Like I said, I'm going to reevaluate how I'm doing the, the rings because I think that could be faster for me too. And I'm also thinking about how I do that stitch where I'm gliding along inside the hem. I, mm -hmm. I think I'm taking a full extra step with each stitch and I could probably be faster if I did it the way you do. I don't know. We'll have to do a side-by-side -side sometime. There you go. I think we'll that's have a hand stitching race. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm very competitive. So yeah, I, I know you are <laughs> and I might lose, but it would still be fun to do it. <laughs> yeah, it would. Well, thanks well, thank to you, Kevin Camille. for the suggestion. This was fun. Um, I really didn't work very hard. I just watched the whole time. So thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Susan did all the work today. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. But thanks thank you. Lot. I learned a lot from this. And if you listened and you're you're totally um, excited to see this, it'll be on YouTube. And um, Susan and I will both have links in the show notes and on Susan's blog. So thank you so much. Thank you. And I have to say it was a lot of fun just uh, sewing and talking. Yeah, it, it's like I'm an old quilting, lucky. like an old uh, quilting uh, circle where yes. you just get together and everybody's stitching and talking. So I really enjoyed that seal. I needed that today. It helped think, me decompress. I think I did too. And I liked watching you sewing while you were talking. <laughs> Good. All right. Have a great day. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.